And this way you can select everything that is basically starting from this vertice where you hover over and then you press shift A and then you can basically move your cursor to increase the radius that you want to select. If you don't like the smile, you could, for example, just go in here and just remove the smile. And there you go. We have the original shape of the mouth back. And now we come to the biggest and most annoying problem that you might encounter in your sculpt that is probably the most annoying to fix and also the sneakiest to actually discover. You've probably been in this situation before. You're working on a character. Maybe you have just finished your sculpt and you have redeboldized your model. Then you realize after you actually, you know, used the model and you've done some more work, you see something horrible, something disastrous, which is what you can see right there. This can happen if you, for example, shrink wrap your model, but in the original scope, you haven't added a mouth. So there's no surface that the mouth bag that you have included in your retopology, you can see there's a mouth bag in the head. You can either exclude it, of course, or, but if you didn't do that, now we have these vertices poking through the surface that are supposed to be inside of the mouth. If we just kind of, for example, use the smooth brush to separate them, we can see we also smooth, of course, the chin. So we basically need to find a way to separate the geometry of the mouth from the geometry of the chin. And the way we can do that is just by pressing Shift A. This way we can create proximity masking, basically. I think that's what it's called. And this way you can select everything that is basically starting from this vertice where you hover over and then you press Shift A. And then you can basically move your cursor to increase the radius that you want to select. There are two modes. You can press three to switch between them. For example, if the selection actually jumps to the separated mesh, then you would have to press three. And this way you can make sure that you only select the mesh that is actually connected to the original mesh that you start from because we don't want to select the inside of the mouth so we kind of have to find a way to only mask what is sort of intersecting with the mouth bag and then we can just control i and we can actually smooth out the inside so this way we can keep the chin you know shape while also fixing the inside of the mouth we have it selected quite well so we can even go into the inside and smooth it a little bit more so that we separate it even more we kind of have to be surgical and just select uh, different areas with the shift a function or maybe even just use the mask brush and kind of um walk your way forward so that it looks a little bit like this and then we can grab for example the inside of the mouth again shift a brush again to select the mouth or we can just use the normal mask brush to select the inside of the mouth and then we can pull it back all we really want to do here is we want to create the basic shape and then if we use the smooth brush we can stretch out or spread out the geometry again like this we can then go in here again and we can, for example, use the inflate or deflate brush and we can hold control so that we can make it wider again so that the mouth actually becomes round. And then, of course, you know, once you've separated the two pieces, you can then work on fixing the shape again. This is not only useful if you need to fix something, but you can also use the shift A function, for example, to select different areas of the mesh more quickly. For example, I want to select the eye, so I just press shift A and then I extend it and then I immediately have selected the eye and then you can go, you know, continue changing the eye shape. The next problem you might run into is a problem that you have brought onto yourself, okay? Which is if you use, for example, the multi-resolution modifier and you use that, for example, to add a smile, for example, or some sort of expression to your character, you change the character in a pretty significant way in these multi-resolution levels and you say, hey, I don't really like the smile. Of course, you could go into scope mode again and kind of see if you could bring the smile back to what it was before. But that probably just leads to more problems that you... Uh, bring onto yourself there's actually a way how you can remove or change the change that you've made in the multi-resolution subdivision level without having to remove the entire level and redoing the whole thing the brush we need for that the multi-res displacement eraser it erases the changes that you have done in the multi-resolution modifier keep in mind that this actually affects all layers so if you for example made a change in layer one one change in layer two it still removes what you've also done in layer one you always will remove everything but now for example if you don't like the smile you could for example just go in here and just remove the smile and there you go we have the original shape of the mouth bag we can now give her i don't know like a puckering mouth there you go <laughs> i think fixing this by just for example using the clay strips brush and trying to fill it up again would be kind of a chore and probably wouldn't look that great it's way way easier to just use the multi-risk displacement eraser and just zip 
there it is it is gone also i probably want to show off sort of my process for these characters a little bit more i've just released one on tuesday but i would be super curious to know what you would be interested in about these characters that i create how to model the armor how to sculpt the character maybe the whole process maybe just one area i would be super curious to see what you would be uh, interested in the most and now we come to the biggest and most annoying problem that you might encounter in your sculpts that is probably the most annoying to fix and also the sneakiest to actually discover. If you now use the viewport level and you increase the viewport level, you can see it creates this weird glitch. It usually doesn't actually start that big. Usually with more resolution levels, it increases in extremity. And that is that some vertices just shoot off in different directions. Like for example here with the mouth, or with the eye. Oftentimes it's in areas where you have creases or areas where the geometry is very bunched together. For example, like the mouth corner or the corner of the eye. And what happens is the more you, you know, increase the level of the multiverse modifier, the more you will see it because, you know, the more it stretches out. Of course, this, this is just an example that I created myself. Usually we have like these spikes of vertices, like individual vertices just shooting off in different directions. These are pretty hard to fix because if you just use the smooth brush, you can see you can you kind of have to always hit the exact point where the vertice is and just use the smooth brush to bring them closer or bring them back to the original place they were before, which can be quite tedious. And sometimes the smooth brush is actually not strong enough for some reason to bring them all the way back to where they were before. And the way we can fix that is by combining the tool that we've learned in the first problem with a tool that we haven't really covered before. I've made a video about the cloth filter, how you can simulate clothing in Blender's sculpt mode before, but I haven't really covered the mesh filter before. The mesh filter basically applies a certain operation filter type to the entirety of the mesh or everything that is selected in a mask. So with the smooth brush here, we have a strength from zero to one. But with the mesh filter brush, we can go even higher than one. We can even go to 100 and we can smooth it with a, okay, maybe 10 is the maximum, but still 10 is better than one. We can now, for example, say, hey, I want to use the smooth operation going over to one of the vertices pressing shift a to select as many vertices as you can that are connected that are sort of out of the ordinary now it actually moves over to the geometry that isn't connected so you have to press three to actually turn it into proximity selection you select the vertices left click and then by pr pressing left click and moving the cursor to the right you can smooth out the entirety of these weird vertices and you can immediately bring them back to where they were before you can see we have some more here. I like to go and see where they came from and then where they are right now. So I can select the, the tip. I press shift A and then I go to where they come from. Press three again for proximity. You can see then it only selects the area that is, you know, the problem area. Use the mesh filter brush and you can bring them back to where they were before. One thing to keep in mind with this problem is that it will come back if you if you increase the resolution level again. So if you find these problems, but then you increase the resolution again, you have to make sure that you go in again and you fix them again for that level. If you want to simulate cloth in Blender in sculpt mode without having to use any cloth simulation modifiers or whatever, you're going to find that video at the end of this video. If you have any more questions, of course, make sure to put them in the comments. Also, make sure to tell me if you're interested in, you know, my processes of how I create my my characters. Thanks for watching. Maybe I'll see you next time. See ya.